Buenos Nachos Amigos, and welcome to How You Juku, a podcast about East Asian pop culture uh, from the perspective of two dudes from the East Coast of the U.S. I'm Petey Rave, uh, and I have way too many empty cans of jupina, like sitting on a table right over here. Uh, I probably should put those on the recycling. Uh, here with me is my partner in crime, my tag team partner, my right hand man to my left hand side, Brandon Cooper, aka King Kaz. What up, Kaz? What is up, my man? Yeah. Uh, we've we're we're together again for the first time since we were together IRL. <laughs> Uh, since we hung out in Vegas, we did the things, we hung out, we drank, we ate food, we ate dim sum, uh, we, you know, we ate Korean barbecue, we drank more, <laughs> you, you definitely drank, drank quite a bit, I definitely drank quite a bit, uh, Whoa. uh, you know, I, I entertained quite a few people at, at an Overwatch tournament, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was I was the mascot of overpants, <laughs> in a sense, and had Scott Johnson rep- compare me to his uh, to a four year old <laughs> with a, a little sippy cup. It was awesome. Um, yeah. How 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 was Vegas for you? How how was Vegas for you? It was it was fun for me. Uh- yeah, it was fun. It was a good time, as always. Um, it was a little bit more interesting to do more of the frog pants things, because last time I didn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just literally wandered the streets of Vegas every time people were like, all right, we're going to a thing. And I'm like, bye. <laughs> um, Peace. Uh, so, so like, because I got to have that Vegas experience of just kind of uh, walking up and down the strip and, and people watching and doing that the first time. So this time... Uh, it was a little more fun to just kind of uh, go do all the things and see all the things and talk to all the people. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, we got to kind of do some really cool uh, hangouts and events. Uh, you know, the aforementioned Overwatch tournament. We hung, we hang out hung out with all of our DKG fam. We hung out with a lot of the the Tadpool. Of course, a lot of the Diamond Club people. I, I got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a nice diamond club tattoo, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, it, it was a fun time. Uh, we're looking forward to now. We're even looking forward to, even though it's many months away, the next gathering, which is TwitchCon. <laughs> we're we're have we'll have more s- structured things going on at TwitchCon, which is kind of exciting. But uh, and that, but possibly even more insanity. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just insanity. There's, there's nothing structured that's gonna happen. I love my friends, but yeah. we ain't there yet. <laughs> uh, that being said, we're here. We're talking about East Asian pop culture. This is, this is the here and now that we have the structure that we have here. Uh, of course, we talk about it uh, every episode. We start off with talking about what's new, what's caught our attention yeah. since we last gathered. Kaz, what, what, what's new? What's, so new for me uh, is a couple of different things. Uh, one of them, one of them, you clued me into, and a couple of other I, I, I came across. So this one is uh, a track by Henry, who we've talked about on the show numerous amounts of times, um, and it's called "Untitled Love Song," and it's kind of just like this really slow ballad. Um, and and I know how much we've talked about like our love hate relationship with kind of ballads and love yeah. songs. These kind of very almost co- Well, I don't know if this one would be coffee shop. I don't yeah. know if this one falls in that coffee shop kind of yeah. Yeah. space because it's, but it is dope. It is, it is very well done. Um, this and it, it just kind of shows the, yeah, this is more of a, like a cinematic ballad <laughs> almost like in a sense. Yeah, it's like like it belongs in a movie soundtrack, yeah. You know, but like in like a epically romantic moment or something. <laughs> yeah, um, but I definitely enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed Henry's vocals. Um, there's just so much about this that like I don't I don't think I can articulate. You just have to go hear it and feel it. Yeah. Um, 
it is just a really well put together song. Yeah. Um, very simplistic video to go along with it. So it, it highlights the song a little more, I think. Um, and I think it's done well yeah. um, to, to make him just kind of... It, it gives it a visual, but you're really, really paying attention to the song when you watch this video because of like kind of the keys that happen in it with him playing the piano or when he yeah. gets into the guitar part him playing the guitar um and then he's just kind of visual candy to this video yeah so it just i just paid attention so much to the song and it was like i just love it it's so basically yeah uh yeah i, I think and the one thing i would say like uh there were moments where i actually thought of like uh of Taeyang Taeyang's ballads but without the without yeah. the I would say with a little bit less of the suaveness that Taeyang has. <laughs> yeah. less, of, less of the swarthiness that Taeyang has. Uh a little bit more of like the, the, the sincere boyishness from Henry, but but yeah, I think a little bit like like especially Taeyang's like when it's just him and a piano, you know. <laughs> like uh I think that that is what it kind of harkens to. Uh plus nice Rube, Bo- yeah. Rube Goldberg machine there. Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. What? What? What else you got? What? What? what I, I know this is this All is right. the one that I, I told you about because I because I figured you'd be into it. Yeah. So this is the one. This is my boy Benzino back. We're back. back. Um, uh, Illionaire Records, IBA Studio, IAB Studios, Benzino, uh, Essence. Uh, okay, go. Uh, it, it's very weird, right? Because this is a very braggadocious sounding song, but it's about two homies going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> so I just love it. Well, the um, video, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, it's yeah. a fun video. It's just him and East Sense just like chilling out in the uh, random places, like going fishing. Like, yo, I'm back. Let's just, just chill. Let's just hang out and then make music. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, still rocking that military haircut, but you know, wh- one day at a time, we're gonna get there. So Benzino, um, I- I've always loved Benzino. Benzino has just kind of just been this Korean rapper that I have gravitated towards because he is so like his style and his his flow and his just kind of his his braggadociousness is just really well put into his vocals. Even if you don't understand Korean, I feel like you can understand it through how he how he articulates um yeah. and, and his his vocals like yeah but if you do go translate his lyrics and look at them they're very well put together they're very well thought out most of the time. there's some that that are are just silly but like yeah <laughs> he, he has a very well thought out well first like rhyme stuff yeah so, um I, I do love i love to seeing e sense kind of uh making a presence uh i do have i do have four words for e sense uh stay off the weed <laughs> just just please we don't need you being having to go away again just stay yeah. here as long as you're gonna stay in korea just stay off the weed and 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 keep making music like <laughs> like i get it it's fun i'm not a i don't judge because I was seeing you know, here, and we're cool with it, but it's not cool over there. So, yeah, just had to play by the rules. They're not great rules, you know. We may not agree with the rules, but you still have to play by the rules. Uh but yeah, Benzino is fantastic. I'm glad to see him back. I'm glad to see that you know he he hasn't missed a step. Uh, you know, he hasn't missed a, he, he still got it. I mean, it's only, he's only been, he only was one was away for like two years, <laughs> like even not even that. So it's not like he was, he went off to, to retire for like 15 years or anything. Uh, but it's still cool to kind of just, you know, now he's got that behind him. He's got the military service behind him. Now he can just go back, focus the rest of his career and, you know, keep getting shit yeah. done. Yeah. I'm I'm here for it, man. I love it. I love Benzino. All right. Speaking of people we love uh, and love talking about on the show, our boy Park J Bomb J Park <laughs> uh, with his song "Dank." Um, 
<laughs> it, it's re- so I I didn't say this. This is like one of the one of the first lines uh, on the comments, but it's like when Jay Park is the rap, the vocal, the visual, and the dance line. Yeah, <laughs> it's just perfect. So yeah. <laughs> um, it's just Jay Park doing what he does best, like uh, a, a more more R and B stylish track, but but he does have rhyme here, um, and it's just a fun Jay. Park Style song. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah, J Park doing the R&B J Park thing uh, that we love. Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's just damn good. Like, I, I love that, uh, like, I, like we said, like, he, he does the rap parts. I, I, he, he's, he's, he's functional. He's a functional rapper. Uh, <laughs> He, he and exactly what he needs to do uh, in his style and the style of songs that he raps in, uh, he does exactly what he needs to do. Uh, he's not going out there. He's not gonna. He's not gonna give uh, MF Doom a run for his money, or he's no. Uh, he's no uh, fucking Aesop Rock, but <laughs> but he puts out party bangers. Uh, but the, but but and that's fine. But when he gets into his R and B shit. That's his. That's yeah. his wheelhouse. That's that's his bread and butter. That's his forte. That's where, you know, he makes babies. That's where. Well, he's not <laughs> making babies, you know, but but he makes. He helps other people make babies. He, he can use it. Yeah. 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 It it is. It is. Uh, it is just fantastic, and I love it. AJ Park is is just is just a beautiful man. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, but it, I, I just enjoyed this, and and for some reason, if you haven't listened to Jay Park up to this point, this is definitely a good track to go check out. Yeah, Jay Park, just a dope, 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 dope song. Yeah, um, yeah, Jay Park. I I I really hope that that whole and I didn't put it. I was originally gonna put it in the headlines, but at this point, it was, it was just because of our schedules, we didn't record. Uh, Back then and uh, now, at this point, but there it's also a month has old. been a lot of confirmation of. So, uh, like, we were also waiting to see if other people reported it or talked about it, and it hasn't. There hasn't been much story to uh, a, a possible report, and I forget which which news outlet, but a possible report that Jay Park was going to retire. Yeah, he said like he posted on on Twitter like, "Yo, I'm, I'm going to retire in a couple of years." It's just like oh, okay, <laughs> like. Uh, and then like, uh, this, this is no, uh, no, no room in, in the game for me. I was like, okay, like, uh, what? <laughs> uh, and then there's, has been no word. He's just been doing his thing. He's just been co- going, no, nothing else. <laughs> but it, I don't know. Look, we all have those moments of weakness where we want to quit, but you know what I mean? Then you, then you come back around. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping that's what happened with, with our boy, Park Bomb. Yeah, I'm getting dank. Uh but moving forward uh, to some other stuff. Uh I have a couple of songs, a couple of interesting tracks. Uh this song kind of just kind of popped up because I'm subscribed to One the K on on YouTube and it was interesting because it, it involved a chick with a guitar and I was like, okay, let me yeah. see that. <laughs> uh it is a song by a solo, a newly debuting solo artist, uh, Soyun, uh, who is yep. a member of a band, I believe it's Sesso, Sesso, Sesso Neon, I believe, or Sesso Neon, uh, coming out with a kind of a going solo, uh, uh, bitch not in solo, uh, coming out with a track, and this one was, it was kind of, caught my attention because it's really cool like it has a very cool like neo soul vibe like almost like a 90s neo soul vibe in a sense uh it had a Mm -hmm. cool like attitude to it 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 was a fun song to listen to uh like Mm -hmm. like the the music the the like the musicality of it uh like the instruments in it like uh it has a cool like 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 soulful feel to it it's 
It has a nice, it's a nice mid tempo tr- or I don't know if it's mid tempo or up tempo. I don't know about things that, these things, but uh, it has a good tempo to it. Uh, the video is cool. Uh, I do appreciate uh, Soyun uh, finding and uh, bringing back. Uh, I was going to say plastic pants. <laughs> I was going to say like you're you're out here talking about all these things, and I know the real reason you linked this video is because she has on the plastic pants. It's it's okay. You can admit it. You can admit <laughs> the real reason you like the video is for the plastic pants. She brought back the we style. We all know it. The classic. We all know that's why you were here. We all know that's why we're here. It's the plastic pants. Yeah. Um... <laughs> But no, but it is, it is a yeah. really, really good song. It is a really good. She she has a, uh, an amazing, like raspy, jazz singer style voice, um, but it's very like neo soul, um, yeah. and it's really good. Yeah, it's just a really cool track, and I think I'm looking forward to kind of seeing what she does going forward as an artist. Like this is one of those like it's not a central K-pop track, but this is a very well made, very cool track that I think people should ch- should not skip over <laughs> that's for sure uh so yeah holiday uh the song is holiday i forgot <laughs> forgot to say uh the song holiday by soyun uh but me, moving forward so just when we had her back uh we have her back again it's <laughs> two comebacks in a couple of months for park Baum. This time, kind of like a surprise. This was kind of announced. That was it was kind of like a surprise thing that was announced. Uh, a collaboration that kind of caught me off guard, but got me all excited because uh, it's like it's the collaboration of one of my one of my all time favorite groups with one of my all time fav- with one of my other all time favorite groups that is active right now. Uh, well, in, they're one of my all-time favorite groups, and they're active right now. But you have Park Baum, uh, formerly of 21, uh, of course, our girl, uh, c- featuring Huyin of Mamamoo in the song called 444, or 4 Hours and 44 Minutes. And it's a, it's a really nice song. It's, a, it's definitely a, it's, it's Park Baum singing, and she's, she's great. Uh, and, and if you kind of like, you, you kind of have to accept that this is Park Bomb's voice and it will be the Park Bomb's voice forever. Uh, and that's fine. It looks, it sounds nice. It may not sound like, a, you know, traditionally great, but it sounds really nice and she's great. Uh, and yeah. this song is I, cool. I, I think she has that thing like for, for like a lot of people where Mariah Carey is weird for some people to listen to. And it's like... If she may not in in your sense of traditional singing, but it sounds good. You know, like it 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 sounds good when you listen to it. Yeah, she's great, and I'm 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 just happy to see her doing things. And then we in we in uh, comes in and does fantastic uh, in her feature, um, and she sounds amazing as, as always. And it was a nice little surprise little collaboration. Uh, it's almost like like the the fan uh you know it's the 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 fan the the successful fan uh moment because uh Huyen is uh, Huyen and Hwasa have like done like 21 songs that when they did talent shows at school they were 21 fan girls like back in the day growing up so now one of them is actually collaborating with one of the members and it, it is it is fantastic. It's one of those really cool moments. Uh, and it's just a fun yeah. song. Uh, yeah. This is a well-made, well-made song. And what, what, what did you think of those? No, I, I, I loved it. I, I think the only problem I have is I feel like they missed a marketing moment of the song being four hours and 44 minutes um, and then having the song be four minutes and 44 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> she could have had like, it right there. Yeah. 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 That would have, that, that would have sent it over the top for me, man. Yeah. That would have sent, sent it over a, the top. An, an extra like, uh, post bridge chorus verse and a chorus and, you know, bring something else. Yeah, you're right there. Like a little like swell in the middle and you have it four minutes. Oh, well, 
Yeah, maybe <laughs> they'll they'll have like a remix rearrangement later on that actually makes it that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh but yeah. Still fantastic. Still fantastic for, for these these two amazing talented women. Um all right. And finally, uh so this one I, I kind of swapped out uh swapped in at the last possible minute because I remembered that this dropped like today uh, as of this yeah. recording. Uh, and it's one of those things where it's like uh, I, I swapped out that the twice song Fancy, which is uh, it, it's a good song. It's uh, It had a whole thing about calling them the K-pop I mean, John we can Cena. always talk about it next week. It's, it's we can not talk like about it. Yeah. Not talking about it now. We, we can't ever talk about it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably talk about it later on or you know, we'll, we'll bring it up, but uh, I wanted to talk about this because this is this is kind of like after after so much time a little bit away and after kind of some of the turmoil uh, and previous. I mean, th- this is not the first track that they've dropped in in these past like bit of time, but you know, it's the it's the continuation of the lead up to their their uh, next album and tour and everything. Uh, so it's, 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 it's cool to kind of like, it, it's exciting. Uh, baby metal dropped their newest yep. track called elevator girl. Uh, and it's a really cool track. It's very, it, it has me intrigued to see what they have to offer with the, the album. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, but it's a really cool track. It has, has some nice like heaviness. It has you know it has that classic baby metal sound. It has you know the heavy like heaviness in the sound. There's but there, there's enough going there. I think I don't know. It, it it has this thing in the in the beginning build up. It literally like reminds me of like a video game, like like a a bullet hell or or a, like some very high paced like the, fast video game is what it reminds me of like, like I, I think i'm listening to this the next time i play league like, shut the fuck up what <laughs> alexis like, well, stop <laughs> uh freaking my voice assistant over here well one of my many voice assistants like three of them in this room. Um, uh, it's too much. Uh, yeah, it, it is like I was trying to like think of the game, like Ki- Kiguruma, uh, Kigurumi. No, no, that's a that's a that's a pajama. Uh, fucking Isu Yaga, Itu 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 Itu. Uh, Takamaki, Takamaki. Oh, damn it! It's that game. It's that that bullet hole game where uh, the fucking the, where you're either red or blue, and then you can absorb the c- matching color bullets. Fuck! It's, oh, it's, it's, that that this one. is gonna haunt you forever. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, yeah, forever and ever. Um, but yeah, I like, know what you're talking about. And then like it, it swells up into a nice build up, and and like it, it once it gets into like the song, it gets going. It, it is it it. it, it it does a really cool job and I'm looking forward to seeing what more we get from the, from the full album, uh, and from the tour. Um, I did do a crazy thing. Um, I have right here from Ticketmaster. Um, farewell could be a ticket to see baby metal at the forum in LA. Nice. Uh, so I did a crazy thing. Uh, I haven't figured out. I mean, it's far from now. It's like in October. I haven't figured out flights or hotels or whatever. But that's going to be a thing. Also, they also announced a, a, I mean, a is show. It, is it going to be around the time of TwitchCon? Maybe uh, it's going to be a month TwitchCon after. Is, I don't know. I don't even know when TwitchCon is. TwitchCon is last weekend of September. Uh, this concert uh, is October tenth, uh, which uh, is. Probably a little. The crazy thing is probably a little bit too much time for me <laughs> to just make it one trip. So I'm like, I'm probably gonna have to yeah. like fr- fly out to San Diego one weekend, and essentially uh, th- two weeks later, like or a week and a half later, fly out to LA, uh, just because like I don't have that much PTO, or at least I don't want to burn that much PTO. Uh, <laughs> uh, because I have other trips that I have planned. 
like Mini Weekend. Uh, but yeah, I also have the fact that they're they announced uh, the whole tour, uh, the U.S. tour, and they're gonna, they're opening up in Orlando, and I'm tempted in September, in early September. I'm tempted to make the drive mm-hmm. go see Baby Metal twice this <laughs> year. Like, like it just this, it's it's crazy, right? No, it doesn't. It no. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna do it. it. Is. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna see Baby Metal twice this year. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, Baby Metal, fantastic. I, I, I'm 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 looking forward to to what uh uh what comes up. Uh, did yeah uh yeah. It's got me flustered. Baby Metal's got me flustered. Uh, it does. Right. You're you're out. I'm like hyped because Baby Metal is just a a very cool. Uni- it's such a beautiful, cool, unique group that uh that just I'm so excited for and I'm so hopeful for uh when it comes to like their sound and their their style. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff. All right. That being said, that brings us to the end of what's new i bring us to the end of this half of the show um let's get down to the nitty-gritty of some headlines why don't we join us welcome ladies and gentlemen to the headlines here at halijuku uh, we talk about some topical topics, things that are going on in the world of East Asian pop culture, things that are happening, things that are popping, the news, the the, the things. Uh, we're talking about you know things that are happening. Uh, let's get down to it with our first headline. Um, EXID are not breaking up. They're not disbanding. <laughs> They're not breaking up. You, you no. Know. <laughs> No, there's not. Uh, so uh, the big headline that happened is that uh, it's right now as uh, EXID did debut in 2012. It is 2019. You can do the math. That's seven years. Uh, it is the year of reckoning for a lot of 2012 groups. Uh, it is the year that, you know, you know uh, the, of the franchise players get sorted out from the opportunity costs and contracts either get signed or don't get signed. Uh, and, or some franchise players decide, Hey, let me check out free agency. Uh, You know, like, uh, it is, it is an, is an exciting harrowing time for people who, you know, who love, uh, K-pop groups and people who stay in groups. Uh, EXID's time is up. Well, not time is up, but the, this is their there's their their year, uh, and we have Hani and Jung Ha uh, are going to part ways from Banana Culture. Uh, are going to guess is, you know seek out uh, other opportunities, seek out other agencies, uh, while the other three Solji, uh, Ellie, and and Hidden are sticking around uh, and signing again. The the word is that they will not be disbanding, which is that's always the word <laughs> until unless there's a bad breakup there they will always say they're not disbanding uh, they i mean the good thing about them it's not like they they are it's not like like I said they aren't breaking up because they actually do have a genuine bond at least it seems uh you, you never know with these kind of things, but at least it seems they have a genuine bond, especially with kind of like having to go so to through so many ups and downs together, you know, long t- yeah. the, those couple of years where they just weren't doing anything <laughs> like two, like two or like two or so years of, of being in a dorm, not working, uh, together, uh, living together and, but, and then succeeding together through, you know, through their hustle. Uh, they've, they bonded over the years. So they're, they're fine as human beings who like each other. Uh, the key thing is, are they going to be, are, are they going to be able to continue to do projects together? Are, this, are they going to, now that they're no longer under the same agency, will there be a priority in the group activities over what the individual activities, especially for the art for the, the two that will be leaving and joining new agencies, obviously Hani kind of like going out and doing her kind of like general 
entertainer person, uh, you know, commercial uh, actor, <laughs> like endorser, entertainer, possibly actor. We'll see. Uh, and then Jung Hwa obviously has always been on track to be an actor. Uh, you know, just just especially lately, and, and she's going to be pursuing that, especially because uh, that's her big kind of bigger dream uh, for herself and for her career. So we'll have to see. I I'm hopeful for them to find it because they you know they work well together. I mean, and, uh, so so there's that thing right where you can work at a job and you can make genuine friendships with people and you can and they can become more than your work friends. Um, but it could still be not the, not the job that you're, you're trajected to continue. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. there, there are places that I worked where it's like, cool. At some point I'm going to plateau and then leap to something else that isn't here anymore. But man, there are people here that, that I really liked working with and I really enjoy as, as humans and not just work friends. Yeah. And I think this is kind of one of those situations where where you know being in that industry isn't always the best, but we've always talked about the leapfrog that happens of sometimes people go into the idol industry to get to other places, whether it's a solo music career or whether it is to be in the idol industry or whether it is to do TV movies and and other things. Sometimes the the easier way of that route is to go through the idol industry. And I think this is one of those where it's genuine, right? They actually became friends by being formed together as a group. They really do support each other. But at the same time, you have to be happy that that they're being allowed with, with what seems like no fight to take that leap to the next thing that they want to do. Yeah. Uh, really cool things uh, they are going to continue uh, their Japanese promotions for another year with all all together because I, I imagine yeah. that's still you know that is still a thing a that contractual is obligation yeah. so so that's still standing uh, and they are going to have a comeback uh, like I think like next week uh, they're going to have they release a new track uh, and I'm looking forward to that because there's a couple of yeah. really cool comebacks Look, uh, man. like next week. So we thought this was going to be a party tour, but it's a farewell tour, which makes it a bigger party. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it, it still is what it is. Yeah, um, I think uh, it. You know, it, I I have faith in Ellie forcing everyone to into the studio. <laughs> And just uh, we're gonna do something else. I was like, okay, <laughs> but uh, you know, forcing them into the studio. But uh, we'll see. Uh, the like we have to remember the fact that a lot of these, a lot of these K-pop groups initially started out with the same ideal as as the Japanese idol industry, where it was supposed to be people kind of come in and rotate out. You know. Um, and and the group name was supposed to persist and the group way of promotion was per- supposed to persist, but the people were, were going to be different. And I think what happened was we came to this thing where, where personality stood out a little bit more. Um, and, and we didn't wholeheartedly believe in that system. So this is what makes it hard to, to have these groups and lose these groups. Whereas if you look at AKB where, where I initially got into AKB, Pretty much none of those people are there anymore, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so it were, and it's still AKB, you yeah. know, and they still do the AKB variety show, and they still do all these other things that they do. But it's 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 a rotating door, and you yeah. always understand that. Yeah, it's a it's an odd like uh ter- that odd like in between where they have some influences from the J-pop idol industry, but they but like everywhere else, they still allow. Well, and like even in Japan, most of the, for regular groups, uh, they allow the the brand to still be assigned to the personalities, uh, yeah, and let the group be the group. And then if it's time for them to move on, the group moves on, and you, it's a whole new brand that gets brought in, if anything. Uh, but yeah, 
It's definitely a different beast when it comes to AKB or the 48 verse. Uh, speaking of the 48 verse, <laughs> uh, the, the other shoe finally dropped, uh, or is finally about to drop. Uh, Mahoho, Mahohon, uh, Maho Yamaguchi is going to grad, uh, well, they announced that she's going to graduate, uh, officially from, uh, NGT 48. A uh, big part of that, it, you know, the whole restructuring uh, and, you know, a lot of the of the canceling of different, like, subgroups and things like that and the whole reset, uh, the whole new 52 or new 48. It's like the, it's like the new 52 in, on comics, but this is the new 48, the new NGT 48. Uh, and she, alongside uh, Reina Hasegawa and uh, Riko Sugahara, uh, are set to graduate uh they're gonna have a joint graduation theater a joint graduation concert uh on may 18th so like a week from this recording and it, it it's one of those where this is the other shoe dropping this is like i kind of like joked but we, we knew this was coming uh you know this it, it it's it was what was meant to happen the relationship wasn't quality <laughs> like uh yeah. and they would have they are definitely and they have this is one of those things where the four a- aks we, we we thought oh every time we would bring up a, a, a like a hypothetical we would think like no they they wouldn't think that they could get away with that they couldn't think that they would get away with you know trying to hide put you know brush this under the rug you know like this or just graduate this person but they they've tried, <laughs> they've tried to ignore it. They tried to like, oh no, this wasn't this, this wasn't this. Do a phony investigation of this and do it like that, and people have not been having it. And they and they're gonna try. You know, they're gonna have this. It's just the inevitable. Uh, they're even uh, finally filing a lawsuit against the men who assaulted uh, Maho, uh, which you know they, they even though they allegedly said that. You know, they concluded that no member was involved. Uh, it, 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 you know, the, this is something which is something they should have happened like months ago. Like, like it says on the yeah. a- a- Asian Doki article. Um, yeah, it, it is good to see that they're not being allowed to get away with this crap like this is bullshit they're not getting away with uh they're not being allowed to get away with brushing it on the rug they're not allowed to get away with ignoring it uh people are pushing them on these things fans are pushing them on these things and they they're i'm not gonna say that they're doing a good job because they're not but at least they're being harassed they're not harassed they're being pressured to not ignore it and to actually do something of substance. They won't, but at least they're being pressured and they, they're not going to get to just get away with things. Um, I don't know. What, what's your impression of this? this um, my impression is like, um, it, it's, it's, it's bad. It's just, it's just bad corporate environment, right? Where it's like everything has to be fed up this chain and then back down it and rather than just doing the thing that you know you are already are supposed to do or need to do and then it, it it's this thing where like i said right so so with the 48 of verse right because it needs to be this persistently clean thing that lives through it with or without its personalities, when you have somebody who becomes an integral member and then something happens, your best bet, your best chess move is to then remove them. Yeah. Right. Because then it, it feels like you've removed all the bad and it never happened, yeah. but it's just, it just goes to show that, that bad corporate environment, you know, yeah. it is, it is all the, all the not fun parts of the the of the idol industry, uh, yeah. and it, it's almost like, yeah, I can definitely just observing this from that from this to all of the things we talk about, how like transient things are, and how almost you, you 
you could almost feel like you know all the girls are expendable all the members are expendable and all those things i can definitely see how at some point it stops being fun to be a fan like like and very quickly like um it is it is a herring thing but i mean it, it, it is what it is i mean uh, i wish it was better it is what it is but it shouldn't be uh this way um it is i would say it's fair to say that this is not unique we just kind of see it on we just kind of see it more blatantly um almost like it, it, it it's fascinating to kind of see the 48 of us and AKB in these groups because it almost like feels like it's a, it's a, um, diorama of the entire, of an entire idol industry as a whole. Like it's a small diorama of how the actual, the idol industry as a whole works. It just, you know, like, especially like the K-pop industry, the K-pop industry on large is like a, mass scale version of what happens at AKB. Uh, people are arbitrarily chosen to be the people that are featured uh, and debuted and have songs uh, while others struggle and uh, you know don't get to do anything while the, and be lost in the sea of, of people. <laughs> you know, like, because uh, there's, I mean, there's a crazy article I don't know how true the number is but talk about how there's like a million uh k-pop wannabes out there like there's a million people out there auditioning and uh, training to be in uh, k-pop groups uh, obviously this is a, in a multitude of different agencies at different levels uh, it, and it almost makes you think of like all of the all of the young athletes wanting to make it big in sports like all of like all of the young kids playing high school football, dreaming of the NFL, not realizing that, not realizing that how narrowly that funnel closes down to, like how little you know a chance there is, and they kind of beat themselves up and put their bodies and their minds through this like this uh, this torture and this like this machine to then not do not go nowhere and then they have to like live their lives you know like afterwards so it is just it is a fascinating i don't know i, I don't know if it, any of all that made sense but just like looking at the 48 verse and akb that diorama of it's almost like it's an industry in and of itself it's an entire industry in and of itself uh, but that's how the industry, idol industry works as a whole, just expanded and almost like how cake pop is and how the pop industry works as a whole, just in a bigger picture where you don't see all the gears. Um, I don't know. Does that make any sense? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, it did. It just is. It's, it's a very complex thing and it's very kind of hard to to articulate in 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 a small form like this you know why why we still love this thing that seems so toxic (laughs) yeah yeah uh it is fascinating to to, to kind of observe uh as much as it is not fun to observe uh speaking of uh the relationships within K-pop, and J- you know, K-pop being influenced by J-pop. Uh, NCT 48, I mean, on 127. Uh, their their Sa-sengs, or their stalkers, let's just say stalkers, uh, to stop making a, a special word. Uh, it's just stalkers. Uh, invaded their privacy at the Houston stop. They're, they're, uh, NCT 127 are touring the U.S., and I think they're actually, they just were here in Miami, I believe. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, which is crazy. Uh, but they weren't Houston. Uh, there was, so yesterday, as, or, you know, a, a few days ago, uh, Sasings of NCT 127 were called out for taking videos and going through the private space of the members on their tour bus during a stop in Houston. 
Uh, fittingly, they were caught. Um, I'm reading the Asian Junkie article. Uh, just as I'm going to go ahead and read it. Fittingly, they were caught thanks to posting the evidence themselves on social media, which were deleted after backlash, but were saved by others. Uh, unfortunately, it went even beyond that as she stayed at the same hotel and followed them around the city as well. Uh, so there's one, at least there's one member somehow got access to the tour bus, followed them around Houston. Uh, they, they apologize on social media for, for all, they, they apologize for on social media for all intents and purposes. Uh, but mostly about posting it publicly. <laughs> this is... So there, there's a lot of weird hearsay in this um, that I think... Ne- there's a lot of things that need to be sussed out, right? Um, there is no there is no official report anywhere as to how they were given access to the tour bus, right? Let's start there. Um... What, well, the what bus they said, I mean, yeah. yeah, well, that's what, that's what Twitter and everyone else said is they, they bribed the bus driver, blah, blah, blah. What they said is the bus driver let them on to help clean up and do some things. And they were recorded when they weren't supposed to. Um, then obviously there's the following, following them and things and, and staying at the same hotel, which could be. That could be seen in a, in a number of different ways. Um, is, and there's a lot of there's definitely a lot of of mad at you because I'm not you <laughs> that are okay. that are in a lot of these threads. Um, but there is the key thing that I think we should hold on to. The two key things are the the following them around and recording them. If they were if uh, obviously if you were asked at some point to not do it right there there is obviously like you're a fan of a thing and and in some light doing that is okay right where where obviously you're there to show your love and 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 support and and sometimes that's okay there most of the time it's not unless given some kind of kind of due permission um the staying at the same hotel like it is it's a flip flop to me right where it's like obviously if they're it, it, that one can go either way i'm i'm not going to i'm not going to harp it on could that go, it could go it go either way depending on whether you can prove that they did it deliberately right so um, uh, cuz so, so, you could they could have booked a ho- a good hotel they could have had the money to book a decent hotel in Houston uh and oh shit! It just so happens to be the one that yeah. their tour manager or also booked. That them. could be <laughs> literally the closest hotel to the venue that and they're gonna like, play. You know what I mean? It's like, like oh shit! There's a room at the like the right near the venue. It's like oh, I could like I could get myself ready for the concert and then go right yeah. there and not have to like do you know because you know when concert day you're kind of like the transporting yourself to the concert can be kind of like yeah. if you can do as little of that on that day as possible. Where like if you're doing going there for vacation and all your other stuff, you can just like when you're casually like you know touring around and doing like fun touristy stuff, you can you don't mind um, uh, commuting a little bit. But when it's concert day, you kind of want to just like all right, I get myself ready, dressed, wash, clean, get my stuff ready, and then just walk right over to the concert venue. Yeah, that that could be very well. So yeah. and and even even the post that that people are trying to call her out for or or them or whatever literally says oh shit i'm staying in the same hotel as nct and like i i i'm like so it's so crazy to be in the same building not like oh shit i'm like i booked the room right next door to them because i fucking read it on the reddit that said where they were gonna stay at it's literally like it sounds so like Oh shit to me in a way. So there are things I definitely don't want to want to like attack these girls for because enough of Twitter has probably already done. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What I would, what I would say, and, and this goes to all fandoms, right? 
learn learn how to control yourself right yeah. uh, <sighs> if only. i don't i don't i don't think most of the things she posted about seeing the tour bus in the, in the parking lot taking a picture and being excited for the thing that you're there to be excited about is bad right that's not bad um being on the tour bus you probably should have thought about that what, even if you were given access by by the bus driver i think that's one you should think about right but i think i think most of the people who are calling them out for this would have taken that same fucking opportunity and probably been a lot more shady yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> um and following them around is just the biggest no no that that i have a problem with yeah that is the biggest thing in here that i have a problem with do not under any circumstances do that like un- unless it is expressly concerned like that hey it's cool to like like we're gonna the nct is gonna walk around the city and and go to like these public places and hang out with fans and do this we're, kind of we're stuff all, we're doing a we're doing a, a meet and walk you know like a walk yeah. a meet and greet walk through he's downtown houston we're all gonna like we're going to these places. Obviously, they would never do that just because the <laughs> the crowds that they would create would be insane. But like, if for what we're talking about, not NCT, other groups that might be a little bit fe- other like people or entertainers, is they're doing like a meet and walk or a meet and greet. You know, structured meetups, structured and organized and uh, coordinated meetups where you're where. It is planned for you to be there. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't don't and, fall. And, and like, there's so many people who are like, you shouldn't have been taking pictures of the bus. You know how many tour videos from rock concerts I've seen where like the biggest thing is to take a picture of the bus. It's like this, this like, oh shit, there's the bus for Blank and Blank, like yeah. for Aerosmith or or this person, and it's like kind of a a cool thing to take a picture in front of the bus because taking a picture in front of the tour bus is not like it it. It's a photo op. It's not an outright invasion. It's like, yo, I went to do this thing. Here's the thing for the, for the, you know, like, like sometimes it's very welcome. I, I think in rock and roll, it's a little more welcome because of, because of the culture to do that. Yeah. Um, and, but I think because of weird saucings and weird fandoms in K pop, these things that would be normal culture, um, don't seem normal cultured yeah yeah um yeah i think because uh, you because no matter what right and 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 i bet you everybody who who thinks they're thinking rationally and 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 even the people at at asian junkie probably just automatically assume these these kids were weird af because when i started to read this i automatically assumed these kids were weird af but then as i read the comments and i'm like there's no first-hand accounts that came from any of these other accounts because these were then posted by other people who saved the things after the people deleted them. Um, yeah, it's it's hard because you're taking second-hand information from a judgmental source, not 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 a a trusted vetted source. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like I I I I sometimes harp on Asian junkie because sometimes they lean a little bit but when you're in that sense of journalism you got to start it level headed yeah. just to get the facts out before you you show your leanings which, which to be fair Asian junkie has never been a it's not a it's not supposed to be a news like a news or journalism true so. true which is it's why I, I don't try to harp on them too much <laughs> yeah it's just it's just a it's just a blog of a dude and he just does a pretty good job of checking your sources and and like it's like it's yeah, like the I'm, daily which show i am thankful for because <laughs> i was able I, because they did so well on 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 giving you a lot of source information that's how i'm able to then take that extra kind of journalistic sense to be like well let me see what's deeper here let me see yeah. what what this thread you know like if i keep pulling on this thread let me see what's at the other end yeah it's is okay it's like it's like the daily show uh like john like especially with like john seward like it's it's a first and foremost it's a comedy show it's a comedy blog but it's just that they do on in their comedy 
they in their and it's satire. Uh, this is less satire. It's just observational com- yeah. comedy or just a casual blog. In that. They're also really good at doing the fundamental things that <laughs> like like checking sources, being you know double checking, make sure they have the yeah, right still, translations. Still, still better than most American blog news sites. Yeah. I mean, what? Huh? Yeah. Huh? What the fuck? My light. I gotta fix my light. Uh, where, where, where is the lie? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't detect. Lie not detected. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, like we'll have to wait and see. There, we'll, we'll not wait and see. It's just you know, don't jump too con- too many conclusions. But fandoms out there, just calm down. Uh, chill, chill. chill. We said before you're at a twelve. We're gonna need you at a two. <laughs> uh, but speaking of crazy fandoms, uh. Formerly of one on one, Kang Danielle. Uh, this is the last little headline, uh, just because like it, it's a cool little thing. I think we talked about Kang Danielle's like uh, contract issues. Uh, court accepts Kang Danielle's request to suspend contract with LM Entertainment. Uh, Kang Danielle's lawyers recently released a statement about their legal battle with LM Entertainment, updating fans with the good news that courts have granted their request to suspend the con- his contract with the company. Uh, you can kind of read the statement; kind of just goes into much detail. Uh, he uh, himself took to to Instagram to write a letter to fans, letting them know, reassuring them. Obviously, it's not over. Obviously, because there's appeals and things like that, and you know, companies yeah. like that like to fucking drag it out to the last possible moment, you know, bleed every, you know, everybody try. Uh, but it's a big moment. It's effectively his ca- contract is suspended. At least it's not canceled, but it's suspended. Uh, so he's able to just go out there, you know, and work. <laughs> he can work now, like, which, is, which is a novel thing. Uh, so it's an exciting moment for fans and for him. You know, he can earn money in, again, <laughs> like, and there's big money out there to earn. Cause He's a like he's a big like talent that he has presence and he's gonna get lots of commercial deals and he's gonna you know he's gonna get a lot of offers for TV shows and and things like that and he's gonna hopefully be able to release new music and uh, and that will go up the charts and and to, you know because Kang Daniel and One One are are big time if you if you don't have if you don't feel the presence of how big one on one, just in general, produce one on one groups, but especially one on one, uh, it domestically. Just understand that they were right. Like I, I, I've thought about it before, they were right up there domestically uh, with BTS. Like, like uh, maybe not BTS now, this very, very, very moment. Yeah, but like a year ago, they were right up there, at least domestically, right up there. It was the them too. So understand that level. <laughs> uh, so and Kang Daniel was a big face of that group. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. it's it's cool it's cool to see that uh, he's going to at least be able to have this big step going forward. Uh, it's so long process, but he has this step going forward. What, did you, what are what are your thoughts? What what did you? I mean, feel it it it's. It's a small win, but but the battle persists. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but hopefully hopefully things work out well, not amicably, well. Yeah. Which means hopefully he gets to get out of his contract, and then hopefully he gets to go and have his pick of where he goes and and who helps him further his career. Yeah. Um. So hopefully we'll have to see how well it goes for him going forward, but uh. Luckily, this is the next step. Now the process continues, but this is this step at least allows him, in the meantime, to 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 keep getting that bread, uh, yeah. get that bread, eat that yep. yeast, as it were. Uh, <laughs> acquire that uh, that, that legume. Uh, yeah. So all the best luck to Kang Daniel. Wish you luck. Fighting. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end of another fantastic episode of Halu Juku. 
Yes, it does. Kaz, you, you've got you've actually quite got quite a bit going on. What's going on? Uh, we still got sports odds and ends. Uh, we just recently wrapped up our talk about Vegas and the the NFL draft and and our what our teams respectively did and then some of the hot picks happening over there. So if you care about football and all those things, go and check out the latest episodes of Sports Odds and Ends over at Sports Odds and Ends dot com um very lacking has been the dkg wall podcast but we are looking to get back into that soon but if you do want to hear our lovely voices go and check out next tuesday this coming tuesdays whenever this comes out that tuesday oh. or or previous um <laughs> it'll episode. be this upcoming tuesday oh, i'll make sure this gets this uh, up soon uh <laughs> yeah this upcoming tuesday i like a couple days where i'm signing about uh there, these yeah. Yeah, Kaz and Curly are going to be on Night Attack. Uh, yeah. The, with, the, with the boys, uh, Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young. The reason why I have this tattoo, uh, well, part of it, but also all the other yeah. idiots that, uh, that I love and hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so I look forward. Th- that's going to be fun. I look forward to, to harassing you two in the chat. Uh, and then. Yeah, and also keep an eye out for the episode of DKG Welp y'all recorded uh, with Justin Robert Young as soon as that comes up. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, <laughs> I, y'all, y'all, should have, y'all should have just let me edit it. But, you know, uh, what? No, it's just there's no, 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 no. <laughs> it's nah, an audio it's, podcast. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is easy. Uh, that being said, go check it out. Uh, go check him out at King Kaz. Uh, I'm at PD Rave everywhere. Uh, the show is Halle Juku. Uh, Juku.com or kpoppodcast.com. Uh, Rebelli.net for this and other shows. Uh, Rebelli TV on YouTube. Well, they tell you, don't you know? Yeah, check us out. It, it, uh, like, share, subscribe. Um check out do uh, give us reviews give us comments give us feedback let us know what you thought about the different happenings in the k-pop but how you reacted to some of the things that happened well you know how how much you know what, what, what are your thoughts let's have the conversation we'll have the back and forth give us the feedback um yeah until next time do all the things hasta los huevos And you're fighting. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>